Hey everyone, happy Chinese New Year, Sun Nin Fai Lok. Chinese New Year lands on February 10th this year, and we thought we would put together some recipes that you could make simply at home to enjoy a Chinese feast. Check out these beautiful envelopes. When we were kids, we used to get $2 bills in these envelopes because the $2 bills in Canada were red. They don't make them anymore. And now our kids get like 50s, which are red, but also hundreds in their red envelopes. Red envelopes are given during Chinese New Year to represent good luck and prosperity. This year is the year of the dragon. My dad was a dragon and he would have been 84 years old this year. Traditionally, families gather on Chinese New Year's Eve to celebrate. In order to prepare multiple dishes, I like to create a plan where I can see where all the things need to be done on a schedule. I also like to make use of my kitchen tools to make things work more efficiently, and then it just won't be so daunting. For example, if you're making Thanksgiving dinner and you had the turkey in the oven the whole entire time, I would choose not to do roast vegetables, roast Brussels sprouts, roast anything else because that turkey is going to occupy the oven the whole day. On my menu, I like to choose a few meat dishes, a dumpling, and then a special rice or noodle dish. We also will serve some simple blanche Chinese greens on the side as a vegetable. Here are four dishes that will make a tasty Chinese New Year meal. Crispy pork done in the air fryer, Hainanese chicken done on the stove top, spicy wontons that you can make in advance, and stir fried sticky rice that you can make in the wok. Enjoy. Lao Mai Fan is definitely a family favorite for us. Every Christmas we will have it and probably every Chinese New Year as well. And so I really do believe that this is the ultimate Chinese stuffing because it has so many ingredients in it. There are many ways to make Lao Mai Fan. I'm making it the stir fried method and this recipe can be found in my cookbook, Chinese Homestyle. I'm using three cups of glutinous sticky rice for this recipe. I soaked this in just regular water overnight and you want to be able to put at least an inch of water above the rice so that it can actually soak up the rice without getting too dry. So I'm gonna go drain this rice now before we use it. Glutinous rice is also sold as sweet rice. So it's different from jasmine rice, Japanese rice, sushi rice, all of that. It is a completely different type of rice. I soaked mine overnight, but you can soak yours for a minimum of four hours. It really depends on how dry the rice is. So if your rice is a little bit older, you're going to have to soak it a little bit longer. Sticky rice is not hard to make, but it is a labor of love because there is a lot of chopping. I'm using six lap chong, which is a Chinese sausage, and also one length of preserved pork belly. Now, what I've done this time, sometimes I don't do this, but my mom suggested that I blanch it for a couple of minutes to soften up the meat so that it's easier to cut through. So hopefully she's right. Oh yeah, so much easier. Oh my lanta, all this time I've been chopping it up from just straight from the fridge. Speaking of mom, the very first time I made the stir fried sticky rice, I made it for Chinese New Year several years ago. And she takes a bite and she says, sticky rice is not sticky enough. I don't think you added enough water. So I said, oh, it's the stir fried version, mom. Oh, takes another bite. Oh, then you did very good job. <laughs> Phew, Chinese mom criticism averted. Right. I hope this is also more soft. Oh my goodness. I don't know why I didn't listen to mom to begin with. Thanks mom. Good tip. All right. So we want everything to be kind of around the same size. It's all about the mouthfeel. With lo mai fan, every bite is a little bit different because of all the ingredients that are going to be in it. All right. Oh, it's going to be so good. Look at all that meat. 
I'm going to chop up five green onions. Separate the dark green parts from the light green and white parts because we're going to cook this part but use the dark green as the garnish. So I'm using dried mushrooms, dried scallop, and dried shrimp, and all of them need to be soaked for at least half an hour with hot water before you use them. I'm going to chop up the mushrooms first. You can use fresh mushrooms if you want, fresh shiitake mushrooms, but I'm using the dried because I find that they do add a little bit more flavor. And I'm just squeezing out the liquid. They are like sponges, kind of cool. And we're gonna save this water just in case we need to use it in the rice. I'm cutting off the stem because it's actually very chewy and we don't want that part in our sticky rice. Yeah, again, we're gonna cut these down to the same size as the rest of our ingredients. If you're using fresh mushrooms, you might want to use a little bit more, so maybe six fresh mushrooms. These are the smallest dried scallops I've ever seen. My mom used to live with us, and so I had access to all the good stuff, and now she doesn't live with us anymore. And so I, didn't, I had to go buy my own, and I, didn't, I couldn't find the big ones in the store, which are really expensive too, by the way. So I was kind of happy to find these little ones and I'm going to shred these. They should be easily shredded. They don't need to be chopped. I'm saving the scallop water to add to my rice. This is about the equivalent of six quarter sized dried scallops. All right, next is the dried shrimp. And I have about two ounces of dried shrimp. I'm gonna cut them down a little bit because they're kind of big. If you have smaller ones, you won't need to do this part. And again, I'm saving the water to cook the rice. Okay, this is about good. Just, again, you want them to be at least the same size as the other ingredients. We're gonna get cooking. Let's turn the heat on up to medium. And if you don't have a wok, you can use a large Dutch oven or a large frying pan where you can easily stir all of the ingredients together. Once you see that wisp of smoke, add a tablespoon of cooking oil. I'm using avocado oil. You can use any neutral tasting oil. Adding all of my meat, Chinese sausage, pork belly, and the mushrooms. Just cooking this for a couple of minutes. Kind of get the oils going, the flavors going. Okay, once you start to smell it, all the flavors, I'm going to, I'm gonna turn off the heat because I can't move fast enough. And we're gonna take all of this and put it in a bowl and set it aside. Turning my wok back up to a medium, adding two tablespoons of cooking oil, adding my rice, the dried shrimp and dried scallop, and the white and light green parts of the green onion. We want the rice to be nicely coated with all of the oil. Stir this around until we get that. Once all of the rice is sufficiently coated with the oil, we're gonna add all of our meats back in. Look at that, this is gonna look amazing. All the colors, yeah. Okay, we're gonna flatten the rice. 
Then we're gonna start adding our liquid. All right, I forgot about the soy sauce. We're adding two tablespoons of just regular soy sauce. Give that a stir first. All right, now we're gonna flatten it. Okay, we're gonna start with the scallop water that we were soaking the scallops in. We're gonna put in about a quarter cup at a time. So we're waiting for the liquid to evaporate and you can tell by listening. So once all of the liquid has evaporated, we're gonna give it a stir. Okay, give it a stir. Okay, add another quarter cup. Flatten it out. And we're moving on to the water that the shrimp was in. Adding about a quarter cup. Again. I'm gonna keep going. Okay, one more time. So that's four additions of a quarter cup of each liquid, or not each liquid, but the amount before stirring around. At this point, we're gonna try one of the grains of rice to see if it's cooked through. Mm, that's very close. So you would just keep going until you get the right texture in your mouth. Trying another piece. It's still a little bit hard. So now I'm moving on to the mushroom water. And again, a quarter cup at a time. And if you don't have any more liquid, just Start adding water. I wish you guys could smell this. It is, oh, it's so fragrant. It smells uh, so good. Hmm. I think it's there. Right, turning off the heat. Right, adding the green onions back in. So my great aunt used to be in charge of sticky rice for our family Christmas gathering. And her advice was always, you know what? The more stuff you put in it, the tastier it's gonna be. So it's good that you have all of these fixings kind of like in the rice because it's not just about the rice. It's also about all of the different ingredients in there that makes it super tasty. If you think about it, all I added was a couple of tablespoons of soy sauce. All the other flavors comes from all the other ingredients. All right, let's get this on a plate. That's a lot of food. It is, it's perfect, especially if you're going to a family potluck. I have an aunt who is making sticky rice for this Christmas. And if she was doing turkey, she would stuff the turkey with this stuffing too. Oh, so good with the turkey juices in there. Yum. I don't know if I can fit it all on here, dude. It's gonna fall off the plate. Well, definitely in a restaurant, you'll probably get about a third of what's on this plate. All right, oh my goodness, look at this pile of rice. Just top with some remaining green onions. I grew up eating wonton in soup with noodles or without noodles, but the very first time I had wontons in a spicy sauce was, <laughs> was about 30 years ago in a Shanghainese restaurant. They served this up alongside other Shanghainese dim sum and it was delicious.
You can find my original wonton recipe in my cookbook, Chinese Home Style, but I'm just making a few tweaks to the recipe to make this one. First, I'm not making as much as the recipe in the cookbook. I'm kind of having it. So I have half a pound of ground pork and half a pound of shrimp. Next, I'm just gonna chop up some of the ingredients. I have two very large green onions here. If you have smaller ones, maybe use three. I'm cutting off the bottoms to plant because they will regrow green onions in the garden. I'm just gonna chop up the white part here to add to my wonton mixture. Because they're so big, I'm just gonna chop it up some more. I want it to be minced so that it will cook faster when we're cooking the wonton. I don't know why my onions are so big, but I'm just gonna use like half of this. So maybe about a tablespoon is gonna go into the meat mixture. Well, the rest of this is gonna go into the sauce. So I'm just gonna cut up the rest of it. I'm gonna add my onions to the bowl where I'm making the sauce. I'm using a thumbs up size piece of ginger. Just a little piece of ginger it gives you about two teaspoons of grated ginger. Grate that right into my filling. I also have about eight sprigs of cilantro. I know not everyone likes cilantro, but if you do, you'll love it in this sauce. And if you don't, just omit it. I'm just gonna chop this up since I have my chopping board out to chop up the cilantro to add to the sauce. I am adding the sauces and the flavors now to the pork and the shrimp, starting with two teaspoons of soy sauce, one teaspoon of white sugar. The white sugar is just there to balance out the flavors. One teaspoon of kosher salt, quarter teaspoon of ground white pepper, two teaspoons of cornstarch, and one teaspoon of sesame oil. Okay, we're just going to stir this in. If you want to chop down the shrimp, you can do that, but I like to have a little piece of shrimp with every bite. If I want a piece of shrimp in every wonton, I'm gonna to have to do better than just leaving them whole. I should have chopped it up. I don't know what I was thinking. All right, so I'm just gonna cut them in half as I see them. See, there's always a way when you make a mistake. All right, that's better. Then there's a higher chance that everyone's gonna get a piece of shrimp. But you know what? You don't have to use half and half. You can use all pork or all shrimp. It's totally up to you. Because I'm not eating the wonton in soup, I'm going to add half a cup of chicken broth and that will add to the juiciness of the filling. So mix it in until it's all absorbed, until you get this kind of creamy uh, texture. So I'm gonna let this marinate a little bit while I prepare the sauce. I'm just gonna make the sauce in the measuring cup so that I don't wilt the cilantro and green onion in the bowl. And you know I can't be bothered with measuring, but I'm gonna. So I want six tablespoons of soy sauce. So I knew there wasn't quite enough in this bottle. It's okay, I have a new bottle. three tablespoons of rice vinegar. Have one tablespoon of white sugar. That's to balance out the flavors. And I'm going to add, we have this San Wu chili, oil chili sauce. I'm not sure what to call it, but it's the sauce that almost killed dude in our dandan dan noodle recipe. So I'm just gonna start with a tablespoon, which sounds like a lot, doesn't it, dude? Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, a tablespoon. About a tablespoon and a half of sesame oil, and about a tablespoon and a half of roasted sesame seeds. Oh, one last thing. I have a very tiny piece of garlic. I'm just going to grate that into the sauce as well. 
and it'll just give it an extra zing. You don't have to add the garlic if you don't want to. And with the chili oil, you can use whatever your favorite chili oil is. Okay, setting that aside. When you buy wonton wrappers, they usually come in like dual package. Sometimes they're packaged all together in one. I like to buy them when they're separated so that I don't have to use all of it. So I'm just gonna use one pack today for this recipe and you'll make about four dozen wontons with it. I'm also using like the Cantonese style wonton wrappers as opposed to the thicker Northern Chinese, Sichuan province, Shanghainese type wrappers. Um, I just like them better, but you can use either, it's fine. These wrappers are also made with egg and I think that's why they're a little bit more um, slippery, so it's like slurp worthy. Okay, take the wonton wrapper. We're gonna put about a teaspoon of filling kind of right in the middle. Adding my little piece of shrimp. I'm gonna fold it kind of about here and kind of squish to make sure that the sauces from the meat is holding that wonton wrapper in place. Take a little bit of water and we're gonna kind of twist this and fold it here and the water will hold it all together. Okay, we're gonna bring a pot of water to boil. And you want a pot big enough for all of them to kind of float to the top without overcrowding. So we're gonna make about 12 at once and put them all in at the same time. And now that the water is boiled, I'm gonna drop my wontons in. I'm gonna do 12 at a time. Once the wontons are floating at the top, you can move them around a little bit, make sure they're not sticking to the bottom. And then we're gonna cook them for another one to two minutes. Remember, you're just cooking a small teaspoon of meat at a time. Okay, I'm turning off my stove. And get these into a bowl. See how delicate the wrappers are? That's what I like about these wrappers. Okay, we're gonna finish off the sauce. I'm gonna pour the sauce into the cilantro and green onions. Can you see how red this is? It looks dangerous. All right. Now, I don't know, big chunks of what? Maybe just herbs. I was gonna say, spoon it generously onto the wonton. That's not generous, huh? This Hainanese chicken dish goes back many, many years, but the kids just love it. And it has become a favorite that we make all the time. We have a three pound chicken and I'm going to stuff it with all the aromatics, garlic and ginger and green onions. Into the cavity, I'm just gonna stuff my green onions. And I don't wanna overstuff it because sometimes what happens is if it's too stuffed, then it doesn't cook all the way through. So I'm gonna try to loosely fit this green onion in there. Like that. I have a total of four ounces of ginger, but I only need two ounces right now for the chicken. So I'm gonna take this piece. I'm just gonna smash it a little bit. And I'm just gonna slice this up. Take half of this. Maybe not half, but part of it. Slice that up. We're only using three cloves of garlic for this part of it. We're saving the rest for later. You just wanna smash your garlic. so that more flavor will come out. Okay. We're gonna put as much of that in there as we can, all the garlic, and then maybe half the ginger, and then the rest of the ginger, we're just gonna toss into the, the water. And that's it for the chicken. 
All right, so this is how we're just gonna leave it. It doesn't wanna stay, that's fine. Okay, so before you get your chicken started, bring a pot of water to boil. I've added a tablespoon of salt, and I just used sea salt. I filled the pot about two thirds the way full. So you don't want it completely full because you need the chicken to go in there and the water will rise when you do that. I'm gonna tuck the chicken wings just behind the shoulders. Okay, and we're gonna drop this in there, breast side up. We're gonna put the remaining ginger in there. And I'm gonna immediately turn the heat down to a bare simmer. It's gotta be quite low. You want the water to be still on top. So this is still, and we're going to poach this for about 50 to 55 minutes. And I'm gonna put a lid on. So meanwhile, while that is poaching, we will get the rest of our ingredients ready. So while the chicken is cooking, we are making the condiments. And for our family, the chicken would be nothing without the green onion and ginger condiment. And that's why I make so much of it. So I'm using six stalks of green onions that I'm going to chop. You know what, I'm gonna grab my other knife. All right, see? My kids and my husband. My husband. Dude. dude. I don't know how you guys can eat all this, but they love it. And most of this will be gone for dinner tonight. There will be hardly any leftover for tomorrow. And you all know that you can easily cut this in half. It's not like in stone that you have to use all six stalks of green onion. You can just make two even and just cut down on your ginger. It's basically equal parts green onion and equal parts ginger. So usually I would just peel the ginger, but I scrubbed it pretty good today. So I'm just gonna leave the ginger on and I'm gonna grate it into my green onions. This is about two ounces of ginger and I can't even say it's a giant thumb size because it's not. It's way bigger than our usual giant thumb pieces of ginger. I love using the microplane for this. Yes, I cheat. I use whatever tools are at my disposal to make the kitchen job easier because you all know I can't be bothered with chopping up ginger into fine, fine pieces or into like practically a paste. See, look at this. You're not gonna get that unless you have massive knife skills, which I don't have. And that's about all you get. About half, half ginger, half green onions. Looking good. I'm gonna use the Instant Pot to make my rice. You can also use the stove top to make your rice, but it's easier, I think, to do it using the Instant Pot. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Turn the saute mode on, and I'm going to adjust it to high. First, I wanna heat up my oil for the ginger and green onion sauce or condiment before I work on my rice. And I'm gonna use the same pot so I don't have to clean multiple pots. And that's another reason why I'm using the Instant Pot. I am adding about two tablespoons of vegetable oil. You just want a neutral oil here. Wait for that to heat up a little bit until you start to see it smoke a little bit. I'm gonna add half a teaspoon of kosher salt to the green onion and ginger. If you're doing this on a stove top, make sure you're using a heavy saucepan, maybe a, at least a, a three quart saucepan. And I'm just gonna put the oil in. Just cooks it a little bit. And we're gonna stir this up. Uh. 
I think that hot oil it just infuses all the flavors. Yeah, it does. Brings it together too. Oh my goodness, it smells so, so good. Again, if there was smell of vision I could share it all with you. All right. Oh, it smells so good. I have a bowl of ice water that I've filled halfway. If you do it in the sink, you can add a little bit more water. We are going to shock this chicken so that it doesn't continue cooking. I'm gonna pull this out so it's easier to grasp. Just leave it in the soup for now. All right. Add a little bit more water until that's covered. And we're gonna leave it in for only 10 minutes. And that is not going to chill your chicken until it's cold. It'll still be hot. It'll just have stopped the cooking. I have an English cucumber that I'm just slicing up and we're gonna line our plate with it, our platter. And we're gonna place our chicken on top of it. And all the sauces are going to soak into the cucumber. And that's pretty much the only time my kids really, really love cucumber. I'm lining up the cucumbers. Just have them kind of overlay each piece. You can cut them into whatever shapes you want. This way is better. Ta -da! Okay. Now for the chicken, the fun part. Okay, we're gonna remove the chicken now from the ice water. Okay, I'm putting it on a board. With Hainanese chicken, when you go to a restaurant, you are either going to get it with all the bones still attached and then you just eat around the bones that are all chopped up, or some restaurants will serve it boneless. And that's awesome. I like to actually serve it boneless, partly because I can never chop a chicken the way they do in the Chinese restaurants. So I'm gonna show you how to debone a chicken. I'm gonna cut off the legs first. I'm gonna slice in between the breast and the thigh. We'll slice on both sides. And in here you will find that there's some juices. And as you can see, it's still piping hot inside. It's not um, cold. Okay. You're gonna cut where that joint is. There's also a piece of bone right here. So we're gonna cook, cook. We're gonna cut just around it. And this is where we'll slice. Okay. There's cartilage there. So that's why the knife is, can easily cut through that. And we'll do that the same on the other side. Now I'm gonna cut the drumstick off the thigh. And if you hold it like this, cut straight down. There's another cartilage that you can cut right through. Same with the other side. Okay, I'm gonna do the drumstick first. I'm gonna run my knife around the top part here because that's where there's some tendon, like this part here, that really is not great to eat. And then I'm gonna take, I'm gonna slice down one side of the drumstick and just keep going. There's also a bone in here, like a very thin bone that I'm trying to avoid. Okay, so that's a thin bone here. Nope, that wasn't the bone. Where is it? Lost it. In any case, trust me, there's a bone there. <laughs> so what I will do with these bones actually is throw them back into the chicken broth and boil it some more to add some more flavor to it. And then I'll store that broth in the freezer for future use or save it for tomorrow and have like soup noodles or wherever, wherever I need like Asian style chicken broth, I will use that. Oh, don't forget the jook. Oh, or make jook with it. Chicken congee, so good with this broth. The rice is now cooked. The four minutes are up and we're going to let it natural release for 10 minutes. I'm gonna slice up the chicken just into smaller lengths. Okay, I'm gonna take that. 
I usually like to put it all the dark meat on one side. Okay, so for the thigh, turn it over where the bone is. And what you wanna do is slice it where the bone is, right there. Okay, and I'm just going to roughly take this bone out, get underneath it. The, and the meat should just kind of fall right off. It's not tough at all. Okay, and you're left with this lovely piece of thigh that is still holding its shape. And we're going to slice it thinly as well. side. Okay, now I'm going to remove the wing. And again, if you hold the chicken up, just slice right through, which make a liar out of me. <laughs> I can't find it. You can do it. I have faith in you. There we are. Okay, I don't know what else I cut. I cut more than the chicken wing, I think. But I'm just going to cut the joint between the wing and the drumette. That should be fairly easy. I don't know if you caught that. And I'm gonna leave this tip. Oh, I'm gonna take the tip off. Although some people like eating the tip. Leave it on, leave yeah, it on. leave it on. Okay, we're just gonna leave it on. Okay, put it on the side along with the drumette. Same on the other side. Now we have the breast left. Okay, so right in the middle of the breast is the breast bone. So we wanna cut on one side of it. And you can feel it. Just slice down. And we're just going to kind of peel it off the bone. You see? Let's gently take it off. Look how juicy that is. That's the only time I don't mind eating chicken breast is if it's really juicy. We're gonna slice this as well into small pieces. I don't know if you can see how moist it is. You see? It's perfect. So this chicken was exactly three pounds. So if it's more than that, like a three and a half pound, I would add another 10 minutes to your cooking. And I really wouldn't use a chicken that's too much bigger than that. I think at the butcher, they were offering me five pound, six pound organic chickens. And I'm like, yeah, no thank you. Because I have no idea how much time it would take to poach those for one. And there's no way we can get through a six pound chicken. It's like a small turkey. one breast and the other. All right, the last of the chicken breast. All right. All right. Okay, almost ready to serve. Last few things. Have some ground white pepper, just a few pinches. We're just going to sprinkle it kind of all over the chicken. And I'm going to mix one tablespoon of light soy sauce, or regular soy sauce, whatever you have. And one tablespoon of sesame oil. I'm gonna stir that around. Make it as blended as possible. Then we're gonna drizzle this right onto all the chicken. My goodness, looks so, so good. Mm -hmm. I have some cilantro here just to pretty it up. 
And we're just going to use a few sprigs. I understand that not everybody loves cilantro. So if you don't like it, don't use it. You know what? It's nice to just garnish it, but and you don't have to eat it, but it does make it prettier. I tried making roasted pork belly last year, I think it was, for Chinese New Year. We had the family come over for dinner and everyone thought it was store-bought. It's so easy to make. It was just ridiculous that I haven't figured it out prior to that time. And now with COVID, it's just easier to make it at home than going into a Chinese barbecue meat shop and line up for pork. All right, so you want to get pork belly with the skin on. That's where you're gonna get the crispy skin from. And you want the pork belly to be nicely marbled like this, like with even meat and fat in there so that you get like the perfect bite. I recommend buying pork belly from the butcher so that you can actually get a nice cut instead of trying to piece together what you can find in the markets. And the one that we buy at Costco actually doesn't have the skin on and the skin is everything for this, this particular recipe. But the skinless one is perfect for cha siu. Seriously, this recipe is so easy. You're gonna wonder why you haven't tried making it at home. We're starting off with, well, we have to flip the pork belly over. Okay, and we're going to use about a teaspoon of Shaoxing wine. And Shaoxing wine is a cooking rice wine. And we're just gonna massage that into the meat until it's all absorbed. And if you don't have Shaoxing wine, you can use like a cooking sherry. We've tried bourbon and it works really well. Um, something along that line. You don't want to use like a mirin, which is a little bit sweet. It's different. And I'm just trying to think if there's anything else you can use in this place. Anyways, Shaoxing wine, you can find it in any Asian market, even on Amazon, I think. I forgot to mention that this is about a pound and a half of pork belly. We're making a seasoning now to sprinkle on the meat. So about a teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon of five spice powder. You don't need much. Five spice powder is really pungent. An eighth of a teaspoon of ground white pepper. Just gonna mix that up. It's actually similar to the seasoning that we would put on Taiwanese chicken nuggets. Mm. We're gonna rub this into the bottom side of the pork belly as well. Just massage that in. Then we're gonna flip it over. And this will be the fun part. So to make the skin of the pork belly super crispy, we had to invest in one of these. It's essentially a meat tenderizer, but it's like a bunch of, I don't know, almost like nails to poke holes into the pork belly. The pork belly skin is really tough, so you want to have something that's really sharp. Now, I have this meat skewer that you could just poke holes all over, but this is a game changer. All right, here we go. Dude, it's so violent. <laughs> just be glad your hand is not underneath. So the more holes you get into the pork belly skin, you'll get more bubbles and that will make it more crispy. And that's exactly what you want here. But you know what, if you don't have this, you can just use a uh, metal skewer and just jab them. And be just as violent. <laughs> okay, I am now going to just score it so that it's easier to cut. after it's cooked. Because when it's crispy and when the pork skin is crispy, 
it's really hard to cut through. You can see, even a knife can barely cut through. Nope, you just want to cut through the skin. You don't want to cut too deep either. There we go. You can see that? See? It's just the skin that you want cut. Okay, then we're going to generously salt the top. Maybe two good pinches of salt. And again, we're gonna rub this into the skin. And what this will do, will draw out any moisture in the pork belly. And that, again, will help you get really crispy skin. Once this is done, you're going to let it marinate in the fridge for 24 hours. No, it's not instant, right? But it is on our show because I've already marinated it yesterday. So I'm just gonna swap places. And look what a difference, eh? In terms of just the, the pork belly skin and how it dries out. Oh yeah. I wouldn't do it for less than 24 hours though. Maybe more if needed, but not less. So you really want to draw out all that moisture. And if there is any moisture sitting on top, just dab it away with a paper towel and kind of remove any excess salt that may still be sitting on top. I forgot to mention that while marinating in the fridge, make sure that you leave it uncovered. Don't cover it up because you want that moisture to evaporate. I have tried several different methods in making pork belly over the past year. And I have to say, this is probably the best method and easiest way to get a really good pork belly. And you all know I can't be bothered with a lot of different steps. So this is the best way that I think will get you the best results. So let's keep going. Okay, I'm using a piece of foil because I want to wrap up the bottom of the pork belly without wrapping up the top. And you also want to make sure that your pork belly is going to fit into your air fryer. Gift wrap. <laughs> All right. I did measure this ahead of time, so I really do hope that it does fit in my air fryer basket. Okay, I did preheat this at 350. And <laughs> now that it's hot, <laughs> okay, well, I didn't think that through. So, anyways, I think I can get this in there. These tongs. There we go. Hey, work with what you have, right? Yup. We're going to air fry this at 350 for 25 minutes. All right, see you then. All right, let's check it out. Oh, my lanta looks so good. All right, we're just gonna take the whole thing out. Be careful, because there's a lot of fat in the foil. And then I'm gonna put this back in and we're going to cook it for another eight minutes back in here without the foil, just so that we can get more of this crispy skin. Putting it back in. And this time we're going to cook it at 400 for eight minutes. Oh my goodness. Looks so good. It looks amazing. The texture and the color, yowza. And see like all those holes that were poked in, that's where all these like bubbles are. 
that will add to the crunch. I love using the air fryer to make this because it really renders the fat well and so that you don't get the blobby fat when you bite into it. We're gonna let this rest so that we don't lose all the juiciness that is inside where the, the tender meat is. And we're gonna rest this for about 15 minutes and then we're gonna cut into it. Oh yes, we will. All right, so it's been actually closer to 20 minutes, so I think it's well rested now. And I am so thankful to have scored this earlier so I can cut right through. Oh my goodness, all the juices are coming out anyways. Do you see how juicy that is? Oh my goodness, look at it, it's just like pouring out of the meat. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Oh yeah, instead of um, trying to break through that skin and make yeah. it a mess. Yeah, oh my goodness, it looks so good. I can't even, oh, my mouth is watering. You know, with Chinese New Year coming up, there's no way we're gonna like go and line up for barbecue meat, which is one of the must haves for Chinese New Year here. Okay, I'm gonna cut into each piece now. I'm gonna do, just go for it, is what I'm gonna do. Well, extra piece of skin for you, dude. Oh yeah, that's mine, <laughs> calling it dibs. <laughs> 